properties of typical sets. Can I ask you something? Yes. So the, the typical set is per distribution function. Yes. So yeah, uh, it's uh, it's dependent on n epsilon and on the distribution, but the distribution is implicit, so uh, we don't usually explicitly state it in terms of that. Um, theorem. There are four parts to this theorem. So basically, we're probably going to spend the rest of today talking about uh, these properties of typical sets. First part. If Sufficiently large n, the probability of the set of sequences that make up the typical set is greater than 1 minus epsilon. In other words, the probability of occurrence of a sequence inside the typical set is greater than 1 minus epsilon. Oh, I should also say for any epsilon. In other words, um, you can make, by making your sequences long enough, you can pick any, uh, you can pick any epsilon so that um, the probability of a sequence finding itself inside the typical set is basically one. Three. The cardinality of the typical set less than or equal to 2 to the n h of x plus epsilon. And 4, for sufficiently large n, the cardinality of the typical set is greater than or equal to 1 minus epsilon to the n h of x minus epsilon. So remember, you can pick epsilon to be basically whatever you want. So this, these two parts of the theorem, um, will formalize the intuition I gave you a second ago, that the number of sequences in the typical set, or the number of sequences with typical probability, is pretty close to 2 to the n h of x. Okay, statement one. <coughs> so let's start with the proof. Um, if you look at statement one, statement one's obvious if you just take the log of both sides of the definition of the typical set. So we will call proof of statement one obvious. And we'll start with statement two. So if um, x1, x2, and so on up to xn, wait, what is, let's go back, what is 
this statement too. Let me write it back up here. Statement two is the probability of being in the typical set is greater than one minus epsilon for sufficiently large n. So to prove this. statement comes in. So um, if this is true, then we know that h of x minus epsilon less than or equal to negative 1 over n log p of x1, x2, and so on up to xn less than or equal to h of n plus epsilon. Um, so if a sequence is in the typical set, this must be true. That's the first statement, which we argued the proof is obvious. Um, so therefore, this is like saying, if I rearrange this, then the magnitude of minus 1 over n log p of x1, x2, and so on up to xn minus h of x is less than epsilon. So how did I get that? I can take uh, h of x out of here and put it in here. I can take h of x out of here and put it in here, and the rest of it is just taking the, the magnitude. So um, it looks like the typical set has been carefully arranged to come up with something that looks like the weak of large numbers. And that's what this is. By weak law of large numbers. So remember the second form of the weak law of large numbers. The probability of this happening is greater than 1 minus delta for sufficiently large n. The second, the first form of the weak law of large numbers was take the limit, that goes to 1. So therefore, if the limit goes to 1, then there must be sufficiently large n so that this is arbitrarily close to 1. That's what this is saying. And since we can pick any delta, we can pick delta equal to epsilon. So what have I done? Basically, I've said, if the sequence is in the typical set, then this is true. And the probability of that being true is greater than 1 minus epsilon. So therefore, the probability, this, is, this, this part is equivalent to saying the probability of the typical set. And that must be greater than 1 minus delta. But we can pick any delta. So therefore, let's pick delta equals epsilon. Statement three. 